An ability to draw or sketch in 3D is a kind of a superpower because it can allow you to quickly visualize and develop your designs in a more creative fashion. All of that without relying on tedious plans or section drawings or using a 3D software. But setting up 3D perspective without the right basics can be tricky and can lead to lack of confidence in drawing. That's why we'll cover five different techniques that you can choose from to set up convincing perspectives with ease to serve as a basis for your design. So the first approach is to use a one-point perspective and it consists of a simple rectangle and four diagonals that lead towards a vanishing point. Sometimes I might add a vanishing point in the middle and just to notionally check if the diagonals are following towards that point. And then depending on where we position that point, if it's higher or lower, that's going to change our eye level height. And similarly, if I place the vanishing point a bit lower, uh, the one drawback of this method is that when placing furniture, it might look a bit awkward. Usually when we look at the rooms they're a bit less distorted than this so that's why i'm going to show you a second method the second method involves starting with the furniture first for example if we want to have a drawing of a living room lounge for example and we want some furniture to be shown draw a couple of rectangles first just to set up the parameters of the room what i'm representing here is basically a coffee table in the middle two chairs and then a couch at the back so these chairs are mostly perceived in elevation we don't see as much the top of those chairs we just kind of see the side of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a very subtle line at the top and to the side that would represent the thickness of this chair. And then I'm going to draw another slanty line to both sides and the other horizontal line. And then by, so you can see better, connecting them both, it kind of starts to portray the illusion of the perspective. I can do the same with this kitchen table. I can sort of add a little trapezoid shape at the top and then pull the lines down. And then similarly at the back where we have the sofa, introduce a couple diagonal lines so they create a little trapezoid shape look at another example I'm gonna draw a kitchen now so I'll start with the island unit first and again I'm starting with the boxes to represent the island unit behind that we're gonna have an actual countertop for the kitchen that might have a cooker and a sink and all those kind of things and then on top of that there's another rectangle that will set the outline for all the kind of cupboard units and things like that at the back and then I might add a kitchen table over here and maybe a couple of bar stools uh, in front of the island unit so you can see here that I'm I'm not actually doing that much of a 3D work. It's more like a, an elevational drawing that offsets the things that would otherwise be coplanar. And if you imagine that the kind of horizon line is over here at the top, which it always is, you know, typically all the furnishings are below that line and all the fixtures are above that. Any objects that are kind of closer, they're going to be lower on a page compared to the objects that are further away. But none of these objects are going to be higher than horizon line. All these big flat surfaces typically will have trapezoidal top. So so if I zoom in, you can kind of see that shape here. Similarly with this table, I'm not paying too much attention to where the vanishing point is. It's probably going to be roughly there. But to be honest, because the distortion is so little, it doesn't really matter that much. Okay, so this is the 2D perspective formation method. You can always go over the top and make it a bit more polished and a bit more pristine. By the way, let me know in the comments below if you'd like me to produce a little bit more detailed tutorial on how to set up these sketch perspectives. I'd be happy to do that. So the third method is a two-point perspective. It's somewhat similar to one-point perspective, but there are a couple of key differences. Now, in one-point perspective, as you remember, we had a rectangle like so, with a couple of diagonals, leading to a single vanishing point in the middle. In a two-point perspective, we also will start with the uprights for the end walls, but this time we have to choose which way are these lines are going to be tilted. Are they going to be tilted that way or that way to kind of reveal a little bit more of a corner of the room? So in this particular case, I'll say that my um, lines, my top and bottom edges, of the room are going to be kind of tilted towards that way so I'll put a vanishing point say somewhere over here and then I'm notionally gonna draw two diagonals that are kind of leading towards that vanishing point over here and then similarly to the first method that I have shown we put another vanishing point um, in line with the first one so they're kind of on a horizontal plane and then we're gonna start pulling the same edges of the room towards it and there you go. This now looks more like the room is tilting. Again, by adjusting the height and the position of these vanishing points, we can achieve different effects. So for example, 
you know, I can put another vanishing point over here and then have room sloping towards it and then have my vanishing point number two in the middle. And that means the room is kind of facing the other way. I also can do this without actually putting any vanishing points, just simply sketching the trapezoidal shape like this, for example, and then drawing diagonals towards it. And then by adjusting the shallowness of the trapezoid, I can portray the illusion that, you know, you're kind of the viewer is above uh, the room or we can have a snail perspective as well. So if the trapezoid is like this, there is of course another way to go about it and let's just show the two edges of the room. So if we have the corner of the room, we can draw lines like so. And again, depending on the angle of the lines, the corner of the room will be perceived differently. You know, in this case, we're lower on the floor and looking up. And in this case, we're kind of higher up looking down. And again, the problem with this kind of method is that once we're going to start setting furniture, it might look a bit silly. So the technique number four is the room in two point perspective, but this time we'll be using furniture as a starting point. So this method is going to be somewhat similar to the one point perspective furniture method. And in this particular case, we want to start with the boxes to set our perspective. Instead, we're going to use the top of the surfaces to define the direction of the perspective. Say we want to visualize an island unit in a kitchen. Before starting drawing anything else, I would start with a simple rhombus. And you can see that this rhombus is quite shallow. The distance between these edges is quite small. The angle is quite shallow. And these edges here, these corners are quite far apart because then we can just simply project these uh, corners down and then we can finish up with the bottom lines. Now, ideally, you know, these lines at the bottom wouldn't be the same angle as the ones at the top. There would be a little bit of um, variation. So these would be more shallow whereas these ones on the bottom would kind of tend to go up a little bit more. We can then start populating other elements in the kitchen. And I'll start with the countertop at the back that would be slightly offset from it, like so. And again, pulling edges down to define the kind of main surfaces. Um, and it's again kind of following the basic common sense principles of the perspective that you kind of want to develop a sense of where to put the lines based on the objects in front. For example, if I'm saying that my countertop is in line with this surface over here, all I have to do is just project the baseline of that countertop towards the back. This is how these two surfaces will be perceived as being on the one plane. You know, then I can do the top of the countertop, can extend the back line to then put some cupboard units. I'm not worrying about, you know, kind of exaggerating the lines too much. You know, most of these lines are sort of almost like parallel to one another. That's the beauty of this method is because we're not exaggerating the lines going towards the vanishing point. Let's have a look at one more example. This time I'm going to be visualizing a bedroom. So again, what we'll do is the same way we started with the island unit, we'll draw a little rhombus. This is going to be the top of the bed. Again, as before, we'll draw a couple of lines down. Similarly, we'll exaggerate the bottom lines a little bit more so that there's a, a kind of perception that they're going towards the vanishing point. We'll do a little headrest as well. And then two side tables. Again, drawing rhombuses first and then pulling lines down. Uh, we can add lamps, perhaps a painting of some sort. The edge of the room, the ceiling line. I mentioned all these methods kind of require a little bit of practice and developing that sixth sense of, you know, knowing where the lines are going. But I think this is a solid starting point, uh, you know, having a rhombus at the top and then pulling the lines and just kind of experimenting with what looks right and what looks less acceptable. Okay, so now let's move to the tip number five, and it is the three point perspective. If we draw a three point perspective cube, it looks like this, you know, all of its edges are going to different vanishing points. And this is great if we want to visualize a space from the top or from unusual angle. We can show the inside of it as well. So it's a kind of an, almost like an axis of view, but with that additional benefit of the perspective. Again, all of the lines converge to different points, but this time we have three points. We have one at Z axis, one at X and one at Y. Another way to show this cube is by, you know, plotting out these vanishing points, Y, X and Z in this kind of triangular fashion. And then what we can do is just simply pull the lines from these vanishing points pull them in a kind of opposite uh, end. So say if these are two vanishing points over here, you want to pull the lines from the opposite one, kind of in the middle of those two. Same way from this point to that point and the same way from here to there. But this time we can start actually crossing some of these lines.
And again, this method has a couple of limitations. It's okay to test the spaces, but generally speaking, if we want to populate perspectives with furniture or develop a little bit more detail, you know, methods like these can become quite convoluted and complicated. So as we've done before, we can start instead with the actual furniture to set up the parameters of the space. Once again, I'm going to start with a simple island unit to draw a kitchen for this demonstration. And we'll start very much similar to how you would draw an axonometric drawing, particularly in the objects that are kind of in the middle of the scene. We don't want lines to have too much exaggeration. We just kind of want to set the parameters. So, you know, it's a simple kind of cuboid extruded. And that is going to be our island unit. We can then put a couple of seats around it like so. And at this point, we can start populating the rest of the rooms. And the way three-point perspectives and axon metrics work is that they kind of rely on the relationships of different objects. So if I have my kitchen island unit over here, it then allows me to offset the countertop. Again, I want to have it so that these two surfaces are co-planar and at this point because we're kind of going towards the edges of the composition we can start sort of exaggerating the perspective a little bit so to test the lines whether you know they're converging or not you can simply take your pencil and kind of see if the edges are going kind of towards the bottom of the page and then similarly if you know these lines at the extremes of the composition are also kind of tend to go to one point and then the same with the opposite if you enjoyed this video, you might also like this other video that I'm going to link up over here. It's a video on how to set up a one-point perspective using manual drawing tools like a ruler and a piece of paper. And I'm also going to add this other video over here that's about sketching over a SketchUp underlay in iPad. And it basically covers a couple of ways how you can use iPad to visualize and render 3D perspectives very quickly. So check those videos out if they look interesting. Until the next time, bye-bye.